Tranquility 
with peace. Amen. And that is what I want to speak to you about this morning. The gift of peace. It is a gift that the world cannot give you. Yes. It is something that only Jesus Christ can give you. But he is such an awesome God that he says over and over and over again, I give to you my peace. God the Father says here, bless the people. And the blessing must say, I give you peace. Amen. How important is that peace then? Especially now. Amen. Especially now. We all now live, or we feel like sometimes we're just surviving in these troubled times. More and more, we discuss of how we are getting so close to the end times. We look at the things that are happening and we know that evil is rampant. It's running wild and there is very little that is stopping it. But that's the end times. That is where we are now. That is what we're going through. But even more, the Word of God says, in the end times, when the evil becomes more and more, I will pour out my Spirit more and more. Amen. Amen. So have peace. Yes. Amen. Because I will always look after you. Yes. I am always with you. I will never forsake you. It doesn't matter in which century you were born. What you are going through, I will always look after you. Thank you. That's what God says to us. So if you feel like you're surviving in these troubled times, I've got good news, the good news for you. Jesus says, let me give you a gift. Let me give you Advantage. 
advantage. That is something that you cannot buy with money or friends or circumstances at all. It's a free gift from Jesus. And as you have taken the free gift of salvation and you pray the prayer to say, yes, Jesus, I acknowledge you. You are my Savior. I can only get into heaven through you. You are the way, the truth, and the life. As you took that free gift, you didn't earn it. As you took it, this is a gift that Jesus wants to give to you and say, take it. Because you can not take it. That's your choice. And you can live in your stress and your fear and your circumstances that are surrounding you. You can live in there. That's up to you. But Jesus says, I've got so many blessings. I've got so many gifts that I actually can give you. If you are willing to take them. John chapter 14, verse 27. Johannes 14, Sire 20, says, This is Jesus speaking. And he turned around and he says to, to you, Say, say, he's speaking to me. Yes, it's 
going to take it. Amen. If someone gives you something, it's a gift. You can decide not to take it or to take it. You can turn your back on it. No, but I like feeling this angry. I like feeling stressed. I like feeling frustrated. Do you know that people do? Some people feel like they deserve to feel like this in this situation. You're robbing yourself.
and in your body, even if it's chaos around you. You can be peaceful, calm and connected in chaos, in situations around you. If you allow and if you take the gift of peace that surpasses all understanding, people will look at you and say, how come you're so calm? What do you have that I don't have? Or what do you know that I don't know? I have Jesus. And Jesus lives in me. And because he lives in me, he's peace. He's peace. Lives in me. And do we all get it right? No. We all fret and panic and... But every time that we can get it right, every time we can chase away and stop allowing and permitting these frustrations, aggravations and everything from getting into our life, every one time that we can do it is one time more. And eventually it will become a lifestyle because that's what Jesus wants. You see, having salvation, nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken, is a process. It's a process and it starts the day you give your life to Christ to the day that you're going to be promoted to heaven. It will continue to grow. You will continue to grow and to change. And one of the changes you need to make is to realize Jesus has done so much for us on the cross. And one of those things he did on the cross for us was the gift of peace that we can have in every situation. So yes, you're going to have problems around you. Yes, your situation is not always going to be perfect. Yes, you might be thrown to the ground. But while you're on the ground, pray. Pray. Because if Jesus says, I give you peace, he is not a liar. So you cry out while you're on the ground, while you're frustrated, while you're broken. Then you cry out. You said, I give you my own peace. Amen. You are not a liar, Jesus. You have died for me. I may not be perfect, but have pity and have mercy on me. And fool me with your peace. And I can assure you, cry loud enough. Cry out with desperation. And he is going to fill you with his own peace that no person, no world, nobody else can give you. Not even your spouse can give you that peace. To have the peace that Jesus Christ gives you means that even in the chaos, the drama, the situation, the fight around you, you still have within you a calmness, control, and inner peace. That is the peace that Jesus gives. And this peace can only come with your relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, if you don't know him, then you don't know he will give it to you. If you don't know him, if you do not communicate with him, then you will not believe that he will give it to you. You first of all have to know it's available for you. Then you have to believe that he's going to give it to you. So you need to read the word, believe the word, and then you have to take it and live in it. It is a peace that the world cannot give. The world can only give tribulation and chaos. Sometimes it feels like you're getting a nice little 
bonus from the world that it's all going well and you maybe had a contract that you could sign. But I can tell you with the contract that you signed, it's going to come stress. Because it's given by the world. It is something that you are doing with the world, with people, in the worldly situation. So with that, you're going to get your tribulation. You're going to get your frustrations. You're going to get your stress. But in that, because you're connected here, every time the stress arrives, every time the frustration arrives, every time the tribulation arrives, you can say, Jesus, your promise, your promise, your gift, I take your gift, you've got peace that surpasses all understanding, I don't know why you're going to give it to me, I don't know how you're going to give it to me, but you're going to give it to me. Because of your word, because of what you've said, because I believe that you are true. It is a peace that causes you not to be troubled and not to fear, but it is a choice on your side to take it. You see in John 16, 33 it says, You are the 16 granddad. I have told you these things. Jesus says, I have told you these things. So that in me you may have perfect peace. Amen. You don't have to have half peace. A little bit of, oh, I'm feeling a bit better. Perfect peace. Jesus peace. He doesn't give off things. So that in me, in me, in me, in Jesus, you have to have that relationship. In me, you may have perfect peace.
come here, open the bow, take it, put it into your life, because as soon as you open it, it goes, shoo. Amen. And then it saturates, first of all, your spirit, and then you realize, see my spirit, goes up to your soul, and it cleans up all of that frustration, agitation, stress in your heart. It's better than going for a massage. Okay. So you want this gift. Believe me. He says, be of good cheer. Take courage. Be confident, certain, and undaunted. Muni twain for me, in other words. For I have overcome the world. Where does that stress is coming from? The world. Everything around us. He's bringing us the stress, the frustration, the agitation, the angriness. Somebody made me mad this morning. Somebody didn't pay the money as they should have. Somebody bumped my car. Somebody had a bad attitude. It comes from the world around us. But he says, be of good cheer. Take courage. Be confident. Be certain. Be undaunted. For I have overcome this. Amen. You don't have to go through this. I've overcome it. And this overcoming I give to you. Amen. Have peace in these situations. He says, I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. Amen. Now, isn't that beautiful? Mm. I've taken away its power. And I've conquered it. That one's gone. Dust. I've conquered it. And do you know what? I live in you. So Jesus says, if I've conquered it, you've conquered it. Amen. 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 That the peace that passes all understanding, that supernatural peace only comes through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes. John 20 verse 19 says, mm. Then on that same first day of the week, when it was evening, though the disciples were behind closed doors, this was after Jesus was crucified, this was when they huddled together in their upper room and were terrified that they were all going to be put to death. Jesus had just been crucified. They had not seen him yet as the resurrected Jesus. They heard him say, but they had not seen it yet. So they were full of fear and wondering what's going to happen. They were behind closed doors for the fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood amongst them and said, Peace to you. Amen. You see, you could allow Jesus to come and be amongst you. You've got to realize that if Jesus is over there, that peace is not going to be with you. You've got to allow him, you've got to call out to him and say, Jesus, I need you now. I need your peace now. Come. Stand here with me and give me your peace. Allow Jesus to say, peace to you. So saying, he showed them his hands and his side. And when the disciples saw the Lord, when they realized he's resurrected, that which he said is all true, he's done it. Because 
because Jesus came and stood in their presence and they knew he was true and everything he had said was true. They believed in him and that gave them that peace because he said, peace to you. Then Jesus said to them again, peace to you. Just as the Father has sent me forth, so I am sending you. So now, here I am, I've arrived. Can you see him alive? I'm resurrected. Peace now be to you. You can accept that I am who I am. And then he said it again. Peace to you. Why? Because I'm going to be sending you forth. So in your journey, with proclaiming my name, doing my will and my works, peace be there to you as well. So in our journey of spreading the word, of doing what we must do for Christ, of living in this earth, peace be to you, he says. And when Jesus showed up, peace showed up with them. They were relieved. They were joyful. They knew everything that he told them was true and they were now ready to face anything. That's what that peace does for you. You become ready to face everything around you, even if it's chaos. Because he, his peace that surpasses my understanding of how I should be feeling, gives me confidence and boldness in the situation. You see, peace is not the absence of trouble in your life. You can be in the biggest problem of your life, but you can still have peace by knowing that Jesus, who is in you, has overcome the world. Amen. He overcame it. He's in me. Therefore, I overcame it. In Philippians 4, verse 7, and everyone knows this one, it says, And God's peace shall be yours. And what is it? That tranquil state of a soul. You see, you don't have to just feel it in your spirit. You can feel peace in your soul. In every feeling, every emotion, every decision that you make, you can be in peace doing it. Because he says, and God's peace shall be yours. That tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ. Whatever comes my way. So what? I've got salvation. There's going to come a day when I'm going to heaven. I'm going to stand before Jesus Christ and he's going to turn around and say, well done. So your little tantrum that you're throwing here, it's not going to affect me here. This chaos, this crisis doesn't have to affect me here. It doesn't mean so I'm going to leave it, I'm going to sort it out. But it doesn't have to confuse me. It doesn't have to freak me out. And so fearing nothing from God, I fear nothing from God because I've got salvation. And being content with its earthly lot of whatever sort that is, whatever is happening in my life, here I'm content. I'm okay because I've got Jesus, because I've got salvation. That's my main priority and purpose. That peace, which transcends all understanding, shall garrison, it shall rise, and it will mount God over my heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Now that peace, that is such a beautiful, descriptive verse of what peace can do for you in every situation. 
Your soul is assured in peace. Your feelings, your emotions, your will are at peace. In everything you do, that's what Jesus wants for you. That's the full gift. Maybe you've just taken one piece out of it. Open up, tear out the box, let it all come. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, Colossians 3, 15. And let the peace, and then it says, soul harmony. Now, have you heard how the band sings up here? They're in harmony. They all mix together beautifully to bring a lovely sound which we can sing. They're in harmony. Is your soul in harmony? I don't think every day. I think sometimes we feel like we're having such a battle in our minds. But he says this peace should bring you soul harmony. Then put the linky to us and your mind and your soul. Everything should melt into one another. And you should know what. But here, supernaturally, you just know it's okay. 
We're getting through this. You have that peace. And in the natural frustration, because sometimes it becomes overwhelming, sometimes the issue with the situation, the environment around us, just becomes too much. Anyone been there?
and I lost those that I want to read to you is Psalms 57 verse 1 and it says be merciful and gracious to me O God Amen. be merciful and gracious to me mercy is receiving favour when you didn't deserve it be merciful and gracious to me, for my soul takes refuge and finds shelter and confidence in you. In other words, I can sustain them, but young Lord, I'm looking for refuge in your presence, in your peace. I'm looking for shelter and confidence in you, Father. Yes, in the shadow of your wings. You remember Psalm 91, and his pinions will cover you. Pinions are those pieces of wings that come out of the top. Under his pinions, you will find shelter. He says here, in the shadow of your wings will I take refuge. And then, and be confident. How? Until the calamities, the problema, and the destructive storms, these storms, are past. Amen. This is what Jesus wants for you. Yes. Come, come under in me while going through the storm. Because I have peace. That surpasses all understanding, which will fill and overflow your spirit, your soul, and your body. And that is an advantage of being a child of God. That is a gift that Jesus has said over and over, I want to give it to you. Amen. So I want you this week to focus on placing yourself into the situation of peace as much as you can think of. If you come up to make decisions, if you come up and you're in a situation, if the environment is too much, if something has happened in your life, I need Jesus' peace. Jesus, your word says, John 14, 27, peace I leave with you. Peace I give to you. Amen. And then you memorize this verse, and in that situation, you pray it. And then you take it. And you take a big, deep breath. Right, here it is. I'm peaceful. Not yet? Okay, let me do it again. And let me do it again. In every situation, and you're going to see, it's going to start, and you're going to start to feel it, know that it's there, and it's going to change you in the storm. Amen? Amen. Let's stand and pray. Son to you, you're a good, good father. And so you are. Yes. We have sung. Amen and amen, so be it. So be it, Lord. Jesus, here you offer us this gift. And it is a gift that we all need. And I pray in this week, Jesus, that when we lift up our voice and we cry out to you and say, Lord, that gift, pass it to me. Holy Spirit, teach me how to open it and receive it again and again and again. 
and again in every situation. Let your peace empire in my life. Let your peace rule and guide me in every decision that I make. Let me experience what it's like to have this gift that you have for us in my life. So that my change in me and Lord with it, the environment changes, the issues change, the situation changes or not, is not the problem. Let each of us be changed within us so that our life becomes peace. Lord for this gift. It is a gift that we are excited to open up. Holy Spirit, show us, remind us of your word so that we know in every situation, hey, open up the gift. Remind us, Holy Spirit, remind us that there is a gift of peace that Jesus wants to give us. Remind us so that our lives can change. Thank you, Lord, for this morning, for your blessings, for your presence, Holy Spirit, for your glory, for your honor in this place. We know you've heard our voice as we sing praises to you. We know you've seen our heart as we lifted up our voices to you. And we know, Holy Spirit, you've opened up our minds that we could understand this message. And we thank you, Jesus, that we can plead your blood over this message and it will not be stolen. We will remember it all. Because you are our Father God. You are our brother Jesus and our salvation. And you, Holy Spirit, are our teacher and our guide. Thank you that we can be privileged to be called children of the Most High God, Adonai. Amen. Glory be to your name. Walk with us during this week. Teach us, guide us, change us. In Jesus' name. Why don't you not hear the voice of me again?